What's up guys? Welcome back to The Mindful Spoon, the place where you heal your gut and you feed your soul. And in this video, I'm sharing a little bit more about my gastritis and all the symptoms that I've been having and the treatments that I've been kind of messing around that have been helping me out a lot. So if you're suffering from gastritis or you know someone who is, please make sure to share this video and to enjoy the rest of this video. I hope this brings some knowledge and some ideas your way on how to kind of go through your own gastritis journey and finding healing food. So the last time I talked about this was when I was really unsure about what exactly I had. So as the days went by, slowly but surely, my whole gastritis symptoms completely went away. And I don't know if you guys know this, but my main gastritis symptoms were mainly on my left side, like my abdominal part on the upper side. And it was just like harsh burning and the rest of my stomach kind of felt like a cooling sensation following along with a burning sensation and that kind of went up a little bit towards my throat so I knew it wasn't full-on horrible gastritis because from what I've read from other people it's a lot worse and there are a lot more symptoms than what I've been going through but this is definitely something that has still kind of affected my day-to-day -day life and it's something that I kind of want to share like I want to share this journey in order for other people to learn from what I've done and learn from my mistakes obviously not everything that I suggest in this video will help you you kind of have to go through it yourself but these could be some ideas it's been a couple weeks since that last video and since I started feeling better um, so far I only get like the pains once in a while I'll get like spurts of gastritis symptoms so like I'll get them for like two days in a week and then like for the next two weeks they'll be gone and then it'll come back and I'm making more and more research so this video is definitely gonna be updated every couple months so far one of the first things that has really helped me a lot is eating more fiber specifically in like the legumes and beans section of the food pyramid I definitely did have a lot of beans once in my lifetime when I was vegan a couple years ago and I kind of stopped. I kind of stopped taking in as much fiber. Obviously fiber is not only in beans and legumes, it's also in fruits and veggies and everywhere else but actually I made a TikTok not too long ago that's posted on my Instagram and my TikTok and it's all about like high fiber foods that really help you with your digestion and with your poop. So for me beans and legumes have really helped me. I know for a lot of people it bloats them even more. However, I like to have small portions especially in the morning because that's when I feel like my body's more open to nutrients and nourishment because I haven't eaten for like the past seven to eight hours. They're also a great protein source so it's something that has been helping me. The second thing that has been helping me is eating sauerkraut. Sauerkraut? Sauerkraut? sour i can't say that word anyways you know what i'm talking about it's the pickled cabbage there's different versions of it some companies actually make different flavorings for it but i got like a plain jane one and so far so good i thought i wasn't gonna like it but the one i got came with like little pickles in them and it's from trader joe's and it's really good and i just kind of have it on the side with like salads or something like that or i feel like it tastes really good with sandwiches it's kind of like a good topping like a pickled topping and as we know it is fermented and it has a lot of really good probiotics which are amazing for your digestion system and your digestive enzymes the third thing that's helped me so far is avoiding citruses now this is another point that i kind of want to make is to start journaling what are your trigger foods or what are the foods that are actually causing you to bring back your gastritis symptoms. For me, it's actually something recent. The other day I started feeling the symptoms and I started thinking like, what have I been doing wrong? I've been eating very well. I've been eating very lean and very like clean, um, not so much processed at all. So I was a little confused as to why I felt that way. But a lot of times it's not what we eat that same day. It's what we eat the days before that our body is piling on. So for me, I noticed that the day before I had a lot of orange juice and a lot of citruses because we were bringing down and picking oranges from our trees outside. So I noticed that the citrus is one of the big factors for the burning sensation. Again, this might not be something that triggers your stomach or your gastritis symptoms, but it's something that I feel like has done to me and it's a good thing to realize when it comes to journaling, to journaling, even just mentally journaling and taking into account what has been causing these triggers, what food has been kept what food has been causing these triggers, what emotions have been causing these triggers, because a lot of times it's stress too. The fourth thing is small portions. Small portions have been sort of like lifesavers, especially when it's gotten to the worst point of my gastritis flare-up, because you can only eat so much before you feel super full and you start getting those abdominal pains and those uncomfortable pains. So definitely having smaller meals more often throughout the day is a huge plus. It's easier to digest and you'll have more energy throughout the day, especially because since you're eating so often, normally when we eat like once in a while throughout the day, our energy spikes up and down, but whenever we eat consistently and at the right 
right times with a timely manner, it's actually even better for our bodies. For most people, I should say. The fifth thing is keeping mental note of the foods that I'm sensitive to. Like I mentioned earlier, it's all about those foods that we focus on. It's not that we're never going to eat those foods ever again. It's just that maybe we need a break from them right now with our digestive system working overtime pretty much. So maybe finding temporary alternatives. One of the big things for me is like I get a lot of acid reflux type of feelings. So I take that into account as well. The sixth thing is this honestly this blew my mind because I was so used to drinking teas and up to like a couple days ago I was still drinking a lot of teas and buying teas I'm not saying teas are bad but having too much of certain teas can actually be bad for you because they relax that sphincter in your digestive system that allows for better digestion and that allows for better like acid acid production and processing and all that stuff I think this also has to do with caffeine because a lot of teas have caffeine and we don't know it sometimes because the lettering in the like tea boxes are so small that like honestly it went over my head so I'm sure it has gone over a lot of people's heads so it's definitely important to study how teas make you feel when it comes to gastritis number seven like I mentioned before having not too much caffeine one of the things that I think spiked in my latest flare-up was I was drinking a lot of I was having a lot of citruses and a lot of teas especially green teas which have caffeine in them they're known to have caffeine in them they're both good for you but at the same time it's good to limit it while you're going through these flare-ups number eight is veggie juice also vegetable juice whatever it is i'm not talking v8 i'm talking more a blend of different leafy greens with fruits that are high in fiber like raspberries and pineapples are great for digestion put some spinach in there some celery some cucumber and kind of keep it fresh and light something that's really easy to digest and for your body to actually get some nutrients and get some fuel in you because trust me when it's gastritis sometimes you literally cannot even need a full meal and it's frustrating so you just decide to not eat and then in the long run that affects you even more number nine is standing after i eat so one of the things that i do a lot and that i've been noticing is as soon as i stop eating and i finish my meal i go right to my desk and start working once again and it's honestly out of habit from being in school from being at work and now from working from home, it's kind of hard to just be standing up and be walking around moving a lot when you have a lot of work to get done. But definitely investing in a taller desk or those stand-up desks or even just standing up once in a while and taking a little like walk around the house and then coming back to your office, your room, wherever. That's definitely helped me a ton because whenever I have those like harsh abdominal pains and burnings and I just feel kind of nasty, sitting down is probably one of the worst things I could do because when I'm sitting down, I'm literally squishing my stomach down all the juices are flowing everything wants to come up in a burp and it's just not a good time number 10 is using a heating pad y'all i don't know how much i'm like my brain is just i'm speechless as you can tell one of the biggest things that has really helped me not so much recently because i haven't had like horrible flare-ups i've been having like normal flare-ups when i had my worst flare-ups a couple months ago I would literally lose hope so quickly, but one day, I forgot where I saw this information, but somehow it clicked in my brain that if I use a heating pad for when I have like stomach cramps for my menstruation cycle, I could probably use it for digestion issues too. So I decided one day to lay down and put like a blanket and then on top put a heating pad on and it worked wonders. Eases your stomach, eases that discomfort, and there's something about the heat and the warmth in your stomach that really helps you digest everything and just get everything out. Number 11 is chewing. This seems almost obvious and to be honest it's a little bit annoying because I love enjoying my food and kind of devouring it and then just feeling at peace at the end. But recently I was part of the seminar where this doctor talked about chewing 20 to 30 times within that bite that you take. And it's a little bit overwhelming and scary but it helps me kind of stay in the moment when I'm eating. It creates an easy process for your digestion to kind of flow a little quicker. It's like you're helping out your digestion in some way. That's about it for this video thank you guys so much for watching that was like a little update on how i've been feeling and the things that i've seen that have been working and i feel like these are kind of um can help out a lot of people especially when it comes to like the heating pad and taking a journal of everything that you feel is kind of like triggering that flare-up i do plan on posting a little bit more videos just like this to kind of give you some hacks on how to digest things a little bit quicker remember it takes a lot of patience to actually find a solution for this but when you do it's going to feel amazing so keep trying keep Keep pushing and keep being the best that you can be and i will see you on my next video bye